Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part three of my version two BB-8 build. If you want to check out version two and how that works, then there's a 10 part series in my channel. Version one was completely different and version three is here. So I'm pretty much going to continue from where I left off. So check out the first two parts for the explanation and to see what happened so far. So in my barrel shaped ball, which is about 300 mil wide and it was all 3D printed and put together last time, I've got this internal hub that's going to drive around the inside and that is powered by a windscreen wiper motor with a 3D printed 100 mil wheel on. So what we need to do today is hopefully get that so it doesn't just wobble around. So this needs spacing out and perfectly fitting in there so it doesn't scrape and it fits in that contour. So I need some little wheels that run around the edge that hold that right in the middle. My plan is to build a wheel which rides on a single bearing, so it can ride on a single piece of studding bolted to the bearing in the wheel. So um, the tyre is going to be Ninja Flex, again printed on the Lulzbot Mini Flexi Struder, and the bearing is going to fit in the recess right here. So that's going to be clamped between two bits of plastic essentially. So we've got, if we just take the tyre away, and we can see that we've got these two rigid pieces which will be printed separately. Those are going to be screwed together and they might be solvent welded and those essentially encapsulate that bearing right in the middle. So um, that should be tight against the rim and therefore the wheel should run through and there is space either side to actually get a nut in on some 6mm studding and it's a 6mm internal diameter bearing so that one piece of studding or bolt with two nuts can hold that wheel nice and stiff. Here are the parts, so I've got my two ABS sort of hub parts and this will fit in here quite nicely and obviously the two of them will press together and hold that bearing in there. So all we need to do is put on the Ninja Flex tyre and bolt this or screw it together with the holes and that should hold and that holds that bearing really tight so if I bolt a shaft to the inside of the bearing then that's going to run really well and it's going to hold it to stop it wobbling. Just stuck a 6mm bolt through there, so obviously the middle part of that bearing rotates and there is space for a 6mm lock nut as well. So once that's bolted, or whatever, from both sides, that'll hold that wheel really stiff on the shaft so it doesn't wobble sideways. And that means I can mount this on a single point underneath or above, and that will give me a nice sturdy wheel. I've got quite a few of these wheels printed. I think I'm gonna need between six and eight in total. And I fitted one in here just to this test thing, which is a bracket that I've put on the banana part, which just sits on there, it's screwed on from the other side, and it holds this bolt so that the wheel can fit on. Obviously there'll be a nut on the top, and hopefully that should help run this around on the inside of this rim. So obviously I need a few of these to keep this in the middle because this is wider than last time. It's a slightly trickier problem. Um, and I think I also need some going this way at each end so they can actually hold this up because obviously the wheel's offset so it's on the other side. So um, I need to play around with the wheel positioning. And I also think I need some that face outwards going this way against the side higher up. So um, we need to work on some brackets for those potentially. So um, the next thing is also to print the piece that joins this together, which is where the um, axle fits between the two so that this doesn't compress and I can get this spacing correct. So I'm gonna print off those pieces and then we'll get on and see how that runs. Here's my internal frame. So I've got uh, three wheels on each side and I've got these going the other way. So there's three of those facing down, so that makes the four wheels. So the danger, of course, with these three is um, this one could get lifted off as this tilts. But hopefully with all the mass pushing down, this should keep traction. Um, so that's why I've not put another wheel on this side, because then between these two, this one could get lifted off the surface. So hopefully that's going to be okay. I need to put this in. I've also got bits to go in here and here that hold the axle to hold this more rigid, but they can't be screwed in until I've put this in the ball. 
So I've got that fitted in the ball now. It, it's, uh, it's a pretty good fit with all the mass pushing down. That wheel should have enough traction and the uh, black chassis doesn't uh, rub on the ball at all. So that's pretty good. It's spaced out nicely with these wheels. So I've got the ends screwed in as well here now that hold the axle in for the side to side axis. Uh, I've got these pieces which will bolt on to hold it. So they will obviously sit on top and that will clamp down to hold the axle in. So that's pretty good. The only thing I've got to do next is the rather arduous task of sanding the um, kind of texture or the lump in between each panel here, like I did on the outside, on the inside. So this wheel can run smoothly, but I only need to sand it in a sort of groove all the way round so that these wheels and these reels don't go bump, bump, bump over all of the steps in the sections. Um, which I didn't do in version 2, and that's why it goes bump, bump, bump as it drives along. So I need to measure in, get the right distance, and just go round and take the step off. Um, and then hopefully we can sort of stick some other heavier weight on here. We can try driving it along. I should add that the internal hub here all comes to pieces, so the main banana pieces here are solvent welded together now. But the motor bracket, all of these little wheels, the um, axle holders are all screwed in. They'll probably remain screwed in, it seems pretty tough. But it does mean I can move the wheels around if I need to, as mass increases, I need to realign it. I can add more of these. I can move these up and down. All of these holes are uniform spacing around, so I can reposition everything, or I can put another one in. I've got a feeling I might need some more wheels pushing out above here, which is what I had in uh, version two, but we'll see how that goes. Hopefully with the mass pushing down, this lot should be sufficient. So I've marked it all the way round with dots where the wheels go over the steps and I'm just going to go around and sand those off. Brushing some more ABS dissolved in acetone in on those tracks to fill up any gaps that have emerged. There's still a few lumps and bumps, so hopefully I can try and smooth these out as much as possible. Right, that feels pretty smooth now. It's obviously not totally uniform but it's a lot better than it was in the last version and a lot better than it was before I did the sanding. So definitely taking all the steps out so hopefully it won't go bump, bump, bump as it goes along. So I've put the internal hub back in. The heaviest thing I can find at the moment is a lead acid battery, which won't be powering it because they're rubbish. I'm gonna use lipos, but for now it's really heavy because it's got lead in. So um, I'm gonna just power that up on a lipo and see how it runs. I've taken the battery out as well here just to test traction with no mass in it and um, seems pretty good. So obviously that was just me touching wires on a battery. It'll actually be much more stable when I come and implement dynamic stability with an inertial measurement unit and a PID controller. So if you want to check out more about that now you can check out version 2, part 2 to see the comparison for how much more stable that'll make it. But I'm not going to be building the control system until all the mechanics are done. The next part of this is the trousers, which is going to be the piece that swings on the axle, controlled by another motor, and that has in turn the flywheel mounted on it. So I've got my axle here, which is a piece of 25mm aluminium tubing, and I found some bearings in my spares box. They're complete overkill for this, to be honest. Um, I could probably do with no bearings and just have loose bits of plastic that spin round, but I've decided to use them anyway. They're quite nice, and I wanted to use them in a project. They are massive. Um, they're, I don't know what, they're probably rated at 2,000 RPM or something. Obviously, this is going to go much slower in that axis. So uh, the plan is to mount two of these on the axle. The axle easily fits through there. In fact, it's loose. So I've made this sort of bushing thing that it sits on. So um, this can be moved around. It's quite stiff on the shaft and it's got essentially a gap fill and it's got a thing with a, a bolt hole through so that I can tighten that up and clamp it in position. And the bearing should fit on there quite nicely. That's quite a nice fit. 
And then the trousers are going to be hung on this, which basically is another bearing block with two bolt holes in it. And that should fit over there. So there we go, we'll have a pair of those and that will allow the axis to swing sideways. So those are now placed on the axle. The axle's not fixed in, I've just taped it in to stop it rotating itself, but you can see those move fairly freely. So the next thing is to hopefully put a track on here that's curved and have another motor that swings across on this cradle, the trousers, that goes this way to drive it. Um, this motor is quite off-centre in terms of its weight. This part is much heavier, so it's going to sit slightly off-centre in the middle. So that's quite good though, because the bracket again can go round this motor and grip it and be attached to these. I need to bond these together as well with a plate that goes either side this way, which is why the bolt holes go through this way. So it's going to be quite a tight fit, obviously the flywheel has to go around the outside of that and be motorised as well, so it's back to the CAD to try and work out how that looks. So I've redesigned those brackets slightly and um, I've had to do that so it's quite tight in there and I really had to fit that motor in which meant making one of those brackets, one of those trouser hangers if you like, part of the motor bracket. So if we just hide some bits and pieces here we can uh, go and have a look inside. Um, and what you'll notice is, it, uh, the reason this is called trousers is because it's like a pair of trousers hanging on the washing line in that two things hang down and they're joined together. So we've got um, a kind of bridge between them which, um, if I just get rid of the flywheel as well, goes uh, around the motor and then the bracket on one side has actually got all these screw holes and it becomes part of the bracket and the other one on the other end supports it and then hung on these brackets will eventually of course be the flywheel. Now um, this whole thing is going to be uh, driven backwards and forwards, let's get rid of that, uh, by a smaller gear. So this um, is about half the radius of the big radius, the motor at the bottom. Therefore the wheel on the motor is about half the size, it's half the circumference. And of course the track it runs on is half the radius as well. So that will eventually be a geared track and a sprocket on there, which I'm yet to design. But everything seems to fit in there quite nicely around the flywheel which is good so um, that can move about 20 degrees in either direction before it crashes into anything and of course moving around that central axis means it stays always within the ball so there's some people who um, are doing an approach of a slider backwards and forth but of course that doesn't give you as much shift before you hit the actual sides of the ball and of course it's very small at the bottom so hopefully this will all fit together I'm going to print these parts out and we'll see how it works So here are the parts, they're going to be solvent welded but I have left screw holes in to align them. So this piece screws on here and goes this way round, or in fact that way round. And the other end as I say is part of the bracket so it's got this cut out in it and that fits around the motor there. And it's anchored on with these bolts which actually hold the motor together and this is what I've done with the other one. And that actually fits through the big chunks of plastic. So I've got this little thing that goes around the bottom but that's not actually bolted to anything and again the motor is bolted on here. So I'm going to get these parts fitted together and then we can hang this onto the axle. So that's all assembled, it is both screwed and solvent welded together. And obviously that motor swings quite happily on the axle now. I've also put the bolts in there and in there so that these things don't slip up and down and that's placed exactly in the middle. So now we should be able to stick that back in the ball and of course this will always track the same radius because it's fixed on the axle on bearings and it can't do anything else. Here are the trousers which are now hanging on their axle mounted on the banana. They're not mounted permanently, I can still lift this out which is quite good so I can take this whole thing to pieces to get to the motor and everything as I mentioned before. So of course this will lean sideways which will allow this to stabilise side to side and also steer which is what was missing, missing from version 2. So the flywheel will of course go around this and it will also move side to side and according to the CAD there's plenty of clearance for a 20% lean which is about that much which should be enough. So the flywheel is also going to be mounted to the trousers 
There will be a space for a similar motor to the ones I used in version 2 to go down each side. I've got plenty of mounting holes to mount the flywheel. And that flywheel I think is going to be hung on a Lazy Susan bearing this time. I'm waiting for that to arrive so that should hold it all square and I won't have to mount any additional bearings on bolts or anything like that. The one thing I do need to be careful of is as I put more weight on here that um, it pushes down on these each side and that's going to cause this banana to spread outwards um, and of course that will then cause the wheels to be misaligned. So uh, the plan is to basically thread a piece of studding, some threaded rod, through the, through the axle, which is a tube, um, and basically put um, nuts on each end with a plate that can pull the banana and keep it in shape so it doesn't spread out as weight pushes down. So that's basically going to tie up this sort of C-shaped banana piece and keep that all in shape. Um, otherwise I'll lose traction on this wheel as the other wheels change position while that banana flexes, so we need to keep that rigid. I've also printed a tyre with a different profile, uh, slightly softer, about 80% infill instead of solid, and instead of smooth, obviously it's got these teeth on and it's slightly squarer, so hopefully that will help it to grip. I also need to make the wheel that drives this carriage sideways, which of course goes on this motor, and there's a curved track that comes off this lump, so uh, this moves here, so the diameter of that wheel is about 40 mil, and that should give me the right speed, so the side-to-side -side carriage runs at the same speed as the front-to-back carriage, and of course that track only needs to be half a track that's curved to about here. Now I'm going to experiment with various things, I was going to make a toothed kind of curved rack, um, but I'm a bit worried about alignment, and also if there's any flex once the whole flywheel and all the weight is on there, and I don't want those gears to grind, so I'm probably going to try a textured piece of plastic track, 3D printed with a slight texture on, and another NinjaFlex tyre which is also textured, maybe something like this, so it's almost like um, a sprocket or a rack and pinion, uh, but basically it's going to be quite forgiving and made of rubber, so I don't have to worry too much about the alignment, and we'll see how that goes. So that's it for this part, but don't forget to check back next time to see me put that flywheel in, mount it up, motorise it, and motorise the side-to-side -side axis. So at that point, hopefully, we should have all of the mechanics down, and at that point, I should be releasing the rest of the CAD for this mechanical part, at least. Obviously, the head mechanism will come later, and I discuss that in part one. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to check out more updates on this project and other projects, and also check out the social media links in the description to this video.